Today on The Grave Talks, Fighting Darkness, a conversation with Bishop Plato Angelakis and Sister Kia. The world is faced with many problems as a whole. On an individual level, many are suffering from the state of the world and the relationships that are under more stress than ever before. At times, the stress and feeling that some of those relationships may not only be unhealthy, but possibly evil. This has led many to feeling hopeless, falling into deep depressions, and at times continues the cycle of negativity. There are beacons of light in this world, beacons who want to bring a light to the very dark. Today, we discuss what Bishop Plato Angelakis and Sister Kia Lynn Francis are doing to help bring that light to the lives they touch. Plato and uh, Sister Kia Lynn Francis joining us on uh, today's episode. Thank you guys for being here and a good time uh, to be here and a good time to talk about uh, what you guys do, uh, getting rid of evil in our world, because my goodness, uh, <laughs> I do a true crime show as well as the, these uh, these paranormal shows. And I am I am baffled every single time I sit down during the week to, to put those shows together by the level, it seems, of evil that is out there today. I mean, when, when I think back to even 20, 30 years ago, everyone knows the name Jeffrey Dahmer, for example, not just because it's a Netflix series now, but even if you were younger and you didn't watch Netflix, you probably heard about someone like that mm-hmm. or, or others, Ed Gein, Ted Bunny. There's always been these figures that were out there, but they were rare. They were few and far between. Now, I... I, I I swear when I I read some of these stories of what's going on out there, there's new ones every other week in in all these different cities around the country. But it all gets kind of whitewashed because there's so much of it to keep up with. It really does feel like uh, like there is more evil out there in this world. And I think it goes beyond just that we have a 24 hour news cycle and uh, devices in our hands to tell us about it. What are your thoughts? Uh, well, well, yeah, I, I definitely there's an increase in evil. Uh, I don't. I think a lot of it is being fed by just our normal society. There are the things that are going on. The pandemic, uh, the inflation rates are going on. People are worried about the finances. They're worried about uh, what's going on with their children. They're worried about the uh, health. They're worried about uh, just like you know, and also. The, uh, the young people, there's a lot of increase in suicide. We know that already statistically. There is uh, the, the, the lack of hope. Uh, I'm never going to own a home. I'm never going to be able to afford a home. Uh, there's no future. Uh, I, I don't know well, why go to school. Mm-hmm. Uh, why get a, get a degree? So all these things feed. They're all negative, right? So, like, I mean, evil is really just a negative, right? It's a negative yeah. energy. It's a, you know, it's, it's so... It's, you know, everybody's polarized. It, 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 it's just this negative attitude. Like, I got it. You know, I can't pay my bills. I either I eat or I pay for my heat. I, I you know, I uh, there's the uh, family breakups. Children uh, are not uh, are not a uh, coping. There's uh, there's a lot of issues. A lot of suicides during the pandemic. Just a, a lack of hope. The lack of uh, of some vision. The lack of you know, like there's no future for me. Why go to school? Why get married? Why have children? Like this is all negative in a sense that so that's just it just feeds this this cycle. So that's what really what evil is. It's, it's just a, uh, just a, if we all had a, a different attitude, and we were all more hopeful and more positive, helping each other. Uh, we, we live in a me me sort of uh, um, environment. And it's all about whatever I, I know. It's all what I can do for myself. I'm mm-hmm. not to help anybody. So you know, when you put all that together, you're, you're basically just making a stew, a big pot of evil. Um, you know, it's it's just. That's what it is. That's we've we've created that. We we we're feeding this. We're feeding we're feeding that sort of that normality now of being normal. And uh, what's the, we're talking about? What's the next pandemic? What's the next problem? Uh, yeah. You know, uh, what's the we're, we're waiting for the economy to collapse. We're waiting for you know, uh, am I going to have a job next year? I, you know, like this, those things are happening. And uh, should I get married? Should I put this off? Should I go for a trip? Should I travel? Should I start traveling? Should, maybe I shouldn't travel. Maybe the pandemic is not over yet. So all these things will feed. Into what's going and into what you know, and, and then of course, what culminates from that is uh, an evil. I, I'm sorry, it's backlash uh, of, of you know, of like I'm just going to take care of myself. I'm number one, kind of thing. And and we've lost sight of like of what really, you know, helping each other, helping our neighbor, you know, and and 
and, and you know, uh, pulling each other up and sort of elevating each other and helping each other, that's all gone. That's all gone. Um, and, and, and so that's the increase. And, and that's all I can say about that, really. It's unless people change their attitudes and then start creating some hope and some, and you know, and, 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 you know, get elected officials in a, in a government that, that will instill that kind of like hope and, and say, okay, we're going to, we're going to change this. We're going to change this around. We're going to find, you know, the answers to these problems. We're going to help people. Uh, then maybe then people will, will, will start uh, to feel better. But I just, I think this has all been prophesized. I think this is just happening. This is the end times. We're talking about a meteor coming. I mean, two, two, 2029, Apophis is coming. I haven't uh, heard NASA's of that one confirmed yet. It. It's <laughs> oh, no, no, actually, it's, oh, it's all over. It's, yeah, well, NASA, NASA fairly confirmed it. There's an actual asteroid. They named it Apophis. It's coming on it on April the 13th, Friday, Friday the 13th. It's going to be a near a near miss or a real close. So close, it's going to knock the satellites out of our orbit. Oh, this that's will be fun between the moon and the Earth. Great. Yeah. So apparently, it's coming, and, and it's confirmed by NASA. They don't know if it's going to hit. They don't know if it's going to be a near miss. Uh, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing two sides of the story. There's a lot of yeah, uh, you know, in, in the news, it's, it's a lot of uh, fear mongering, right? So yeah. I mean, so you know, you think oh. The, uh, there's a meteor coming well, in five years. So, wow, well, I'll try bother going to school. Like, you know, I mean, like, you know my, bother get my yeah. degree and getting in debt. Like, like, I mean, so, like, that's kind of the attitude people have. Like, well, this is all happening. And, like, well, maybe I'll just sit back and kind of wait, you know, and see what uh -huh. happens. Or maybe I should start stocking up, stocking up supplies. You know, yeah. the shelves are starting to empty. They were, you know, the, su the supply chain has been disrupted. I mean, I go to, I, I even go to the supermarket and see that there, there's not a, a lot of certain things. There's mm -hmm. definitely a, a, a depletion of things. So, there, so you know, we start thinking about, well, maybe I should stock up. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I shouldn't buy that refrigerator. I shouldn't buy that home. I shouldn't buy that. I don't want to get myself into debt. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. So yeah. all this fear mongering and the news and all that, you know, you put it all together. What do you get? You get, you get this, 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 uh, so sort of negative. Yeah. Was, it, and, it was, and we call it evil, but it's negative. It, it's a stew uh, of, of hopelessness that we seem to be yes. simmering in right now. And, and it's an interesting thing to, to kind of watch. It, what I'm, I'm wondering about this, and, and in no way am I trying to get political or anything like that, but mm -hmm. is there, are there people uh, behind the scenes pulling the levers of our fear when it really I I is not truly needed, but it it's more so advantageous for them and, and a certain group of society, a very small group of society, to have everyone living in that sort of fear-mongered world versus yep. not? I, I don't really know why, because I would think society would be better for all if everyone is prospering and making money and doing well, then I, everything so you need people to make money if you're in the higher up area yeah. you don't need them all dead or or broke I, so so I, I i try to understand the uh, the logistics of all of this but it, it does feel to me sometimes uh, especially exiting the pandemic after everything that they had said to us with the pandemic we must do this we must do that and for a while i was playing along thinking okay they know what they're talking about and then, and then eventually you look back and go um, there was a lot of misinformation going on here. There's really no other way around it. Mm -hmm. Whether we knew it or not, or somebody didn't know or not, we were just kind of, you know, people uh, playing the telephone game, saying, well, you should do this, you should do that. And then you get mad at each other when somebody's not doing this or that. But then you walk away from it even further, right. and then you start seeing other things like, oh my gosh, we're going to have a monkeypox outbreak. And it's like, well, that didn't quite scare everybody well enough, so... Asteroid, I actually I guess. called that in, 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 <laughs> interview three, in, in an interview three years ago. Yeah, they asked me about what my thoughts were on COVID, and I said, "There's a pox coming." I actually said, "There's a pox coming." I said that you won't be able to hide because it'll be on your face too and stuff. So yeah, monkey pox. But I, is I was it, like, oh, okay. But is something like that. <laughs> that truly? You know, I mean, obviously it exists. I I certainly recognize that it affects mm -hmm. a very small group of the population at this moment in time. Uh, it doesn't seem to be anywhere nearly transmittable yeah. like COVID or anything was. So, yes, these things exist, but we we seem to amp these things yeah. up or, or our media does or who is ever is telling the anchors in those right. chairs. Here's our stories today. Uh, and then, you know, talk about it. We have to get the attention and they know how to spin things to make things uh, to get views, uh, essentially. Uh, are we creating far more torment for ourselves or is someone back there again behind the curtain 
trying to create more torment for society as a whole when there really isn't the big boogeyman behind the uh, that, that's coming for us. But we're going to tell everybody yeah, I, there's all I, these I things. Think, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think I think that not to be political, but I, I, yeah. I'm more apt to believe that there are there are a small number, a small group of people that are that are pulling the strings. I think it's it's uh, it's it's you know fear controls people yeah. and 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 it dry it drives the economy, it drives uh, behavior. So mm-hmm. you know there is somebody in the background. They do have talk about population control. Uh, the smaller the population, the easier to control. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they're less rebellious. Um, certainly. Uh, wars and, and stuff like that and the fear of war um, creates you know uh, uh, the, the the economy it, it drives things it, you know to build yeah. things and the, to create stuff and it certainly yeah it controls I mean you know you you create a pandemic like was it was COVID-19 as bad as it is what they said it was or I mean mm-hmm. it certainly had, was an impact I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm being sure. a nurse I've been affected by it and by economically and socially I've been affected because I get sick I can't go to work I can't, yeah I could more facilities. It certainly had an impact, and it financially, I have like I almost like I, I know it was quite, quite the hardship. But to what extent? Like so that so that the the uh, uh, so the uh, the people who are making the, the the immunizations for that, you know, the vaccines, are they making how much money they make? Yeah, from that governments, and then you know they put they put all this money out to support people. Then and at the end. At all, they all had to pay tax on it. So I really don't know what mm-hmm. what like. It's definitely, I think there's something that's driving it because yeah. because I think it's just more of a control because because people who who do have money can can benefit from uh, economic collapse. You know, the economy was to collapse today. People who have money can buy uh, low, obviously. You know, and yeah. because actually, uh, they, they said there were more millionaires made during the pandemic than before the pandemic because there are people who are, people who had money can could benefit from that and could use yeah. could, could could invest. When the economy was collapsing, people were were able were able to jump in mm-hmm. uh, markets, right? And and uh, sure. the houses and the, the the houses were, I mean, the, my house my house went up in value, like yeah. like you know, and and, and in a, in a matter of months, it went up hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, and it, there's no way the house would be, was worth that. Sure. But we inflated we inflated the the house market, and people people who had money benefited yeah. from that. And, people who had homes, yeah. right, benefited. And you but, have but those who don't have money. Yeah, then they're, they're, you're, you're stuck. Yeah, it, and it's an interesting thing to to look at because you know anyone. I, I don't blame you know advantageous business people who may you know just have felt like, hey, this is a way I have a little money. I can make some money here. I'm going to do it. I don't consider those evil people. They found a way to to do the best with what they had at that moment in time. Mm-hmm. But when you go even further, I guess kind of what I'm getting right. to is right. the man behind the curtain is the people who are saying, okay, this is kind of what we're going to be pushing for our news on this side and that side. And we're, you know, and it's not even news directors. It's not news anchors. It's not the, the, the people who are working at these places. Cause I know a lot of people, they're just normal human beings that are covering stories that they're told to cover, but there's a man behind those right. curtains. Yeah. There, there's, there's someone that's pushing oh, yeah. it. Is that, are those people, I mean, is it, does it go to? I mean, I don't even know who these people are because I think it even goes beyond like your Rupert Murdochs and all of that. And and you could say that there's a good argument that someone like Rupert Murdoch is evil. But there's, I think it goes even beyond the the public figureheads. Is there someone or a group of people back behind the scenes, uh, literally doing the devil's work and intentionally doing it? I'm talking. Uh, I guess you know what you'd see in the movies where you have you know there's there's the the calf skull or whatever the goat skull and they're literally worshiping the, worshiping the devil uh, or doing some sort of ritualistic thing yeah. to control and then it all kind of gets pushed out and we're none the wiser we're not looking this as at some sort of satanic thing that's being pushed out on us or but it, it, the consequences uh, and the the power that some of these people seem to have certainly is far more reaching than what a normal human being you would think would have yeah I, I just i just think that there's there's definitely a group groups of people that are out there that, are, that have been out there for quite some time that are that they have an agenda of trying to control sort of uh control things it's, it's all about control and it's to benefit them uh in regards to it's all about, about, about monetary things uh, there's certainly groups out there that are not uh, i would say not kosher they're somewhat evil certainly mm-hmm. uh and uh, i mean there's those they're yeah they're they're, they're far reaching than than normal governments obviously and and they control, it, or they, or at least they manipulate circumstances. I'll go so far as to give them a little bit of 
benefit of the doubt and say, you know, like, you know, if there's a pandemic that's blown out of the water a little bit, or, or if there's, uh, you know, an economy or they're worried about the economy collapse and they'll blow it. They'll, they'll, mm-hmm. they'll do more fear mongering to, to, to control people's behavior. Cause I mean, and then all of a sudden everybody's panic buying or everybody, everybody's yeah. doing this or, you know, whatnot. So I think there is, I mean, it's, it's not always conspiracy. It's hard to prove certainly, yeah. but, yeah. um, but I think the, the evidence, the evidence is there that there is definitely, um, uh, uh higher up groups in the upper entourage, you know, that, that, that are they're sort of controlling uh, governments and, and situations yeah. and wars and, you know, and, and things like that. Because, uh, I mean, uh, wars actually make money, I believe it or sure. not. I mean, that's, I mean, they create yeah, wars and when the states goes to a war, mm-hmm. it makes money. I mean, they buy arms and things. So, you know, everything has a monetary sort of benefit. So, yeah. they, you know, um, certainly this, this pandemic costs governments fortune, which we as taxpayers are going to have to pay for it. Um, you know, they had to get vaccines, the rollout, and this and that, the mandates, mm-hmm. uh, controlling yeah. people, the it, buying. It, 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 makes, so, I mean, yeah. it, it makes you wonder just, you know, how far back, you know, w- w- is this all really kind of a source of evil that is, you know, influencing all of these things? Uh, kind of getting off of, of that area, uh, what I'm interested in talking about uh, here today, quite a few things. But you, uh, uh, Bishop Plato, uh, there's a lot that's going on in in your world in terms of uh, being out there, helping people, doing exorcisms and things of that nature. But I know you, uh, as you self-describe them, you handle things a little bit different and you're getting more people involved in, in, in this world to kind of combat some of it in any way, shape or form that you can. Why don't you enlighten the audience? I know a lot of people know your name, uh, but for those that don't uh, know the the details, you handle this a little bit different than what others may do in terms of uh, handling exorcisms and cases such as that. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It's just just to add to that is, is I, it, I now I look I, I've been looking at exorcisms more than just uh, demonic. I mean, mm-hmm. I've heard of stories of people being sort of influenced by aliens and things, and whether aliens are demonic. In themselves, I don't know, but there's people who said I've seen like aliens sort of in, in infiltrating people and sort of controlling people for their whatever agenda that they may have, whether it's good or evil. Um, um, I, I think there's there's a lot to be said about that as well. So as things evolve, as we're starting to sort of evolve as people, as a, as a human species, we're starting to see that there's there's other other forces in the universe that are starting to have their play on us and so it isn't necessarily demonic it also could be you know um it could be aliens it could be many other things it could be interdimensional things it could be um as we start to sort of uh, become you know as we head towards ascension as we that's what people would, would call it i'm starting to look into some of these things but to me it's all I'm, I'm i'm trying to f- uh, liberate people from all these things so it's not just demonic it could be you know uh, anything to do with aliens for stuff. People are saying, oh, I'm being infiltrated. Uh, you know, because, because aliens have a different... When you look at people, they sometimes are different in so far as a demonic presence is trying to destroy you personally, maybe your family around you, where I mean, perhaps an alien presence, which I've been discussing with many other people, is they're, they're there for the long term to sort of control your behavior to manifest some kind of outcome in the long term. Maybe someone who's a a government official or someone who's something uh, who has some power is being controlled by uh, a higher force, higher entity, you know, to, to uh, have an outcome in a long term for, to destroy you personally or your spirituality, but to control uh, a behavior. So, I mean, so I, I, I don't even look at it anymore as demonic. Anymore. I go and look at it as well, this person is asking for help. I'm going to go in and, and I'm going to try to liberate them. Uh, get their free will back is really what we're trying to do. So what do I do? I, I utilize, uh, unlike main mainstream churches like main main uh, churches that like you know like the Vatican, who just has an exorcist that goes in, maybe two, be a doctor involved or whatever. They do some you know the, the usual rituals, investigative work and whatnot to see whether it's mental health compared to some demonic presence. I actually go and utilize. Gifts. People have these wonderful gifts. And as I mentioned before, they, it's 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 written in Revelations. It's, it says the people in the end times, which I do believe we are, <coughs> excuse me, um, will possess the ability to be prophetic and have visions and see have dreams and all these things. <coughs> Forgive me. Sure. No. Go ahead. Um, 
and and, and they and they will um, and so I think we we can't just blow that away. We have to say, okay, well, Revelation says that in the end times there is a reason why God has provided these people with these particular gifts. So I utilize them, and I have seen great outcomes. I've had multiple people they, they do Reiki. Uh, Sister Kia is a master of Reiki. Uh, right. Master of the higher levels. Yeah. So, so, uh, and, and I use that as a as a means to like uh, um, uh, as a post exorcism to help people uh, sort of recover. Uh, there's people who use crystals. They use uh, their light workers. There, there are a lot of people who are who are sensitive. I'll send them in just to find out what's going on in the home. Is it what's the entity? How did they get there? Who brought it in? Why is it attached here? What have they been doing that's wrong? What have what they have not been doing that they should be doing. And so all these things will come out with all these people who have all these wonderful gifts. All this information comes out and it's wonderful. Then I can sit back and, and look at the team and say, okay, what's our game plan? And then we, we approach it from that, that perspective and we're very successful and the outcomes are great. So I've had a lot of people saying, this yeah. is like, I never have to go twice. I very rarely have to go twice to a place because uh, we go in there with the, the intention of getting it out mm-hmm. right away. And I got a lot of questions I want to unpack there, but before we kind of get to some of that, uh, you were talking about the end times, about the Bible saying that there are people out there with gifts, uh, and, and and that they you know will use them and such. There's other places. I mean, I grew up uh, in a Lutheran church, and it was taught you know don't uh, don't mess with psychics, don't talk to clairvoyance. It's all it's all evil. It's all bad. It's all this or that. Uh, Enlighten me uh, and and the audience on that as to how we were told wrong. Essentially, is as, as easy as it can be put. Well, I think the the Book of Ephesians says not not to not to dabble in, in the occult and things like that. But mm-hmm. then it also goes on as you go through the Book of Ephesians. As it goes on, it says, but if you're going to do this, <laughs> it says no that you're not dealing with flesh and blood. You're dealing with spiritual, so the, the, the game needs to play differently. The rules are not the same when you deal with blood and flesh. And then it goes on to say, and if you're going to do that, you know, you're going to knock on Satan's door, for example, or you're going to knock on the spirit world, mm-hmm. then be have the, the, the protections, the, salva- the head of salvation, uh, the girth of, you know, like, uh, it goes through all the protections, right? All the, you know, the, the, all the, the rules. The rules are right there. It's like it's actually a manual. Mm-hmm. If the book of Ephesians is a manual. It says, first of all, don't dabble. But if you're going to dabble, know what you're dealing with, which is basically spiritual and not physical, mm-hmm. and know that you better be protected. Yeah. And, and these are the, and it goes through the various protections. So, so I mean, I think it's all about the intent. You know, it's it's the intent. I, I mean, people, I, I know people who are psychics and they, they do readings and they make money, but they, you know, they're single moms and they're supporting their families. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, you know, what's wrong with that, right? Uh, I mean, it, again, it's all what you what, what do you what do you what do you do with that gift? Are you are you conjuring things up for personal gain, or are you there to help people with that gift? And I think that's where the the distinction needs to be made. You know, uh, I mean, I mean, Sister Kia has got wonderful gifts, but she doesn't go out there to to do it for herself gain. She's there to help people. There's a difference, yeah. right? So you know, if you know, we're liberating people who are possessed, and she, and then you know, of course, it says you know, you know. Uh, once a, a, a demon leaves or is exercised, it will return back to its home, like the person. And if it's found uh, empty, it will actually repossess the person and bring seven worse demons than, it, than, than itself. And that's because we have to fill the empty space with something. That was the, if you if you if you exercise somebody, you've got to fill the empty space with something, or it will return. So this is where the Reiki comes in, where you know someone can be. He gets the Reiki work done. This is where Sister Kia comes in and does her thing, you know. And and uh, again, she could talk more about that because that's that's her that's her bag. You know? so, yeah, you know, uh, let's you let, know, let, let's uh, uh, let's touch uh, on that for a little bit. Where where you do get something out of a person, something that that is very dark, something that's been troubling them, that is beyond their control. How what are you doing? What are you doing? Tell me about the Reiki. How are you re- how are you basically refilling that person with something? positive so there's not the uh, for rent it's, sign for the it's, the demonic. it's actually caused the, mm-hmm. it's actually cr- one of the term one of the terms used to describe reiki is the christ light actually mm-hmm. um and uh it's high vibrational energy high frequency 
um, versus where something is demonic or, you know, those are low level energies, depending on what faith you, you know, subscribe to. Uh, so by removing the low end energy, I go ahead afterwards and do like Reiki. I'll do the, like a whole body um, adjustment and use that high vibrational energy to try and fill them up with something positive. Um, and a lot of people that have actually had exorcisms go on to become, you know, part of the Reiki community. Um, I also treat everybody that's been in the house because obviously they've suffered emotional traumas um, from watching a loved one go go through that and, um, you know, just kind of set them up in that way. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm like with my, my Reiki lineage, Dr. Asui started it, I believe, about 122 years ago or 102 rather and then it was, he taught Mrs. Takata and then she taught in North America and between Dr. Asui and myself there's maybe 27 masters so my lineage is really good and it's not diluted and it's not like uh, an internet course for a weekend that's like mm -hmm. make you a master I study under an ascended master and that's the highest level that you can reach and I'm a, I'm pretty close to being a grandmaster of just how she splits her courses that I'm a master of higher levels so I'm higher than a Reiki master right now um, and I'm a teacher as well although I choose not to teach usually it's just you know it's uh because I'm not charging yeah. people for yeah. stuff sure you're so, helping people you know it's just it's all about helping explain to me more about what that is all about when, when you're you're helping someone heal through reiki what exactly are you doing so there's chakras in the body and i call them like little battery sensors like the like where your batteries charge up different parts of your body mm -hmm. and um so the main chakras that we would work on would be like your crown chakra your third eye which, you know, it's forehead, um, your throat, your heart, adrenal glands. Um, you do grounding exercises um, as well to ground the energy out. And as a master or whatever, it's up to you to decide what symbols to use and activate on the person, which will best benefit them. And some of the, you know, some of the easiest things or the, that you learn kind of in level one work fantastic for healing in terms of, um, you know, regardless how many more symbols I've learned and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I go back to like the, some of the basics at times, um, but making sure that people are well grounded too. And, um, you know, it's, um, they seem to enjoy it. I usually people fall asleep. Um, it switches the energy in the room completely. Like, Plato fell asleep on the stairs when I was doing it. <laughs> I guess the room just got so calm. And I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. she's going to fall down the stairs right. head first. I, I, I think, I think we're all, we all started falling asleep when she was working on somebody. And I'm going, oh, my God. I was like, okay. Like, <laughs> and I, but, but yeah, but it, 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 yeah, there's definitely an energy an energy shift there. You, 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 know, you know it. You feel it. Um, well, people maybe, will feel you know, it. Like I've, I've done people oh, yeah. that, that um, you know, they've had uh, chronic pain in a certain area. And I've treated that area. And like I, had a, I have a girlfriend that, <clears throat> excuse me, she wears uh, braces for carpal tunnel syndrome. And I treated, I treated her, and I didn't know she had this. She'd never told me, mm -hmm. but I was just drawn to work on that area of her body between, you know, her elbow and her fingertips. And she ended up not needing to wear her braces for like three months, kind of thing. Um, and she said, and she slept like a baby. Usually would have to take a sleeping pill, but slept like a baby the night that it was done. And so you just, it's kind of like recharging those batteries and the chakras and making sure they're all in alignment. And, um, you know, I, I can feel attachments when I touch people, but I can also, it's funny, you have to be careful if you have a pacemaker because it is energy work. So, you know, that's one of the questions when we do health history is, do you have cardiac issues or whatever? Because physically, a lot of times, if I'm working on the heart chakra, it'll speed up the heart rate. But I've had people with like muscle twitching as if they had a TENS machine on them mm -hmm. when they, when it was being applied. Um, I've used it on my son. And he's just like, why are your hands so hot? And I'm like, they're not. That's 
that's what that's the download mm-hmm. of energy that you're getting and then he touched my hands and he's like yeah they're not hot i said no you're just that's your energy that you're receiving it's not actually my hands that are that are the heat source you know mm-hmm. i'm just a conduit basically and the way i look at it is anything that i can do that's going to help people um is a gift from god so you know that's that's just how i look at it and and being, you know, a mystic in the church, like I'm very proud of that because there's not too many um, mystics registered by the church. Like it's, it would be, you know, if you went to a whole bunch of different churches and asked you of a mystic here, chances are they would say no. So um, I'm proud of that, and I I can help with that. I can read people, um, you know, say someone's keeping something from you that's really important. You know, you yeah, like, you're, like, yeah, you're, you're yeah. going to have to get that out of them. Or, yeah, you know, the mystic, that, the, the, yeah, the mystic, the mystic part is really important that, uh, that we, like there's three, like myself included, there's two other bishops that we, we recognize, uh, Sister Kia as being a mystic, not because we just want to make her one, it's because she's, she's proven to actually have the gifts. And, and that's where it comes down to is you, it has to be a proven thing. Even in the old churches back in the day, you know, you know hundreds of years ago, to be a, a, a saint or a Catholic mystic, they you know, were like, there were saints who were mystic. Mm-hmm. It was it, it was recognized and it was acknowledged uh, at the time that you know the gifts that they had were valid. They actually produced fruit. I mean, it wasn't like I'll always make you a mystic if you feel like it. You have to actually prove that the the gift that you have is actually uh, uh, it's actually doing something. You know, you actually you know you're not just saying, "Well, I'm you know I'm you know I have this gift," but then you haven't proved that you can do anything with it. So it's 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 a, it's a question of actually saying, "Well, you know I I'm, I'm a mystic and." I'm and I'm doing Reiki. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I, I'm moving the energy. I'm I've made a difference. It's been proving on many on many times and on many levels. And and once we all recognize it and acknowledge it, then we we all sign off on it that she's actually a mystic. She has a true gift. So it's it's not just you know making someone a mystic. We have it's it has to be proven. It has to be like you know you have to like you know for example in the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church. You know, you're not a saint unless you have three miracles. So unless you have your three miracles, you're not a saint. So it, it has to be proven before we sign off and say, okay, well, we're, that we've actually, this person actually is what they, we, we think that this person is. Mm-hmm. It, it, so there's, there's different, uh, different gifts out there. And, you know, and, and um, I, like I said, I, I, I use a lot of people. I, I try to use the best of the best. Um, and there's like, uh, there's a sister, uh, Lucy, who's out in the Windsor area, Detroit area. And we, she just came on board as a sister. She does some Reiki, but not obviously at the at the extent that uh, or the level that uh, Sister Kia does. But she's more into the ufology, more of the, uh, more different different type, different type of energy sort of work um, and using light work and things like that and crystals. So there's there's again different gifts and and but I, it's nice because when I use I use various people to do gifts uh, who have gifts to go in. I'll say okay, you three for example, three people with gifts. You three go through the house on your own. Don't talk to each other. That's sort of the approach. I don't know if you really want to talk about well, the approach I use. That's one of it. Go in. I kind of sit back. You know, I just kind of sit back and, you know, I'm, and don't, don't say nothing. I send, let's say, three or four of them in and have various gifts at different levels uh, and variations. They will go through the house as they see fit, pick up what they pick up. Then they come back and they share individually what they, what they picked up. And I get a lot of similarities, a lot of... Uh, uh, various things, and then we then 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 we we know what we're dealing with. A lot of times, we pick up, we pick up stuff that we didn't even realize. And, and then, then we, yeah. as a team, we decide yeah. what it was the best, best 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 approach and what's the game plan. Uh, and then that's how we we oh we should concentrate on that particular room. It's in that room. Uh, it was the son who brought it in. Uh, now it's attached to the mother, and you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And so we know exactly where to go, what to do. And so we, we put our all our concentration on, on that one thing, and we're very successful. And and the and the and the clients are happy, and the outcomes are always positive. But it's again, it's it's just sitting back and just watching them do their thing. I watch Kia do her thing. I watch the other sensitives do their thing, and then they come back, and they all they all come back with very similar, but sometimes some variations. But it's all it's nice having that variety. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you, if I went, i tell you, if I went, Tony, totally, if I went in by myself, just me. Myself, mm-hmm. yeah. Maybe another exorcist together. Mm-hmm. It would take me days, days and weeks of going in there to figure out what is going on, and I may be trying to 
uh, bless a certain room where it, the entity has gone to a different room, you know, and, and things like that. So, you know, it, it, it really helps to, to have people who have that kind of insight that I don't have that can tell me, okay, it's right there. There is where it is. That's our concentration point. We're going to focus on that. Yeah. And, and uh, that's why we're successful. It's almost it like... Was, it was funny. One, one case that we did with Nespar, <laughs> I was alone in the hotel room <laughs> for a while and uh, we met up there before we went uh, to the, the site of the exorcism. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, I have a reading, you know, and it was kind of funny because I had all this information and Tony's like, when did you speak to this person? I'm like, well, I didn't speak to this person. And Plato was laughing. He goes, no, I just went out to pick up pizza and this is what happened. <laughs> yeah, I went, out, I went out to get the pizza. For some reason, yeah. you know, we couldn't get pizza. So I went out, went, out, went out to buy the pizza and she just got a vision. And then Tony Spera and the other members yeah. of the team showed up at the hotel. And we all kind of, we all kind of meet together off site. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we go to the client's house and talk about what our, what our game plan is. And, and, and Sister Kia was just saying, well, yeah, it's this, 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 and this, and this, and this. And you know, he says, well, why don't you, you talk to the client? Well, she, she didn't. She, I went for pizza and I came back and this is what she got. <laughs> so, yeah. and then, but, she, but she was banging on. She was banging on. When we, you know, and I went to, um, I went to another, uh, well, Sister Kia wasn't with me, but I went to uh, another, another client in Toronto um, a few years back. And I remember going through the entire house week and I cleansed it. I thought, okay, I'm ready to leave. And the dog, uh, was, they had a family dog, and the dog went up to the one bedroom and was barking, barking, barking. The dog was actually thrown down the stairs. It, the legs did not touch any of the steps. It went from the top to the bottom without even touching the stairs. The dog actually, like, like it, it peed itself yeah. in fear. And what it, was, what it was doing, it was barking. It was riding out that the spirit that I was trying to get rid of did not leave. It had gone to one of the rooms. Mm-hmm. I, again, I did not use a sensitive in that case. I did not have that that person to tell me, you know, where it was. So I, I went in there kind of blind, thinking, okay, I'll just do the whole house, and hopefully it felt like it was done, and it wasn't. The dog actually ratted it out, and uh, you know, kudos to the dog, you know, for doing that. But, but it, it told me exactly, you know, the thing had not left. It went to a certain bedroom. Then I went back and I and I didn't I didn't leave. I went back and I and I, I concentrated on that bedroom. And sure enough, then it was gone. So again, you know, this is the reason why I use the sensitive because they really can tell me what is, where it is, what it's going, what it's left. Um, I had one case where it left, it would go from one person, like, sorry, it would, it would leave the person and take off to a bedroom, and then okay, oh, it's gone now. Oh no, now it's back. And I, and I would run upstairs to the bedroom where okay, it's over here now, and I'm, I'm so basically playing tag with the thing. Mm-hmm. It's like running around trying to trying to elude me. But if it wasn't for the fact that I have people like Sister Kia can tell me, okay, it's gone from the person. Now it's gone to the room. Now it's over here. Now I feel it in this room. Now it's gone to the basement. You know, if I didn't have those people, I, I'd be running, I'd be chasing my tail. You sure. know, like I wouldn't know where, like where to, like you know, you know. So it'd be it's really really, really hard to, to concentrate on on uh, on what it is because it will leave the person. All of a sudden, go back to the person that's sitting in the chair and the eyes roll back. Okay, there it is. It's back to the person. You know, then I got to run back downstairs and when I get down there, it's gone again. And, 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 and like, it's, it's crazy. It's a waste of time, uh, energy. And, uh, you know, and we don't have in this kind of day of age, I don't have the time to go to a person's house like mm-hmm. four or five, six days in a, in a row. Uh, but it, like in the Roman Catholic Church, like some exorcists, they go for like months, yeah. weeks and months, you know, um, even years to a person's house to work on that person. Um, I like my approach better. I go in, I want to know what I'm dealing with, how I got there. I want to know the story. I want to know what the family's doing, how uh, what they have been doing, what they should be doing. And a lot of times they go in. There's no Bible anywhere. There's no crucifix on the wall. There's they haven't gone to church. They don't bother going to church. There's a lot of a lot of things, just simple things like that that just they let themselves open. And then maybe uh, you know one of the one of the kids just came home with an attachment, and they, they like to be on the with the mom. The next thing you know, the mom is got an attachment. You know, it starts with a, it starts with an attachment, and it then becomes infiltration, and you know. An infestation, then and then it goes right into a possession. So you got to kind of nip it in the butt. So it's it, like I said, it's uh, having these these people with gifts is invaluable, and I think and I, people should be using them, uh, using these individuals. If they're not. That it's just it's crazy because it's so invaluable. I mean, I mean uh, for the client, it's just it's just, it's it's priceless to me. It's priceless. Um, I, I I would know what to do now without those people. Yeah. Like right now, Sister Key and all. But if I didn't have them, I would know what to do. I, I would go in blind. I would like I would know because I don't have that ability. I don't, you know, I'm I'm the heavy hitter. I go in. I do the, you know, I do the, mm-hmm. the, the cleaning up. You know, the, 
Uh, you know, I'm the heavy hitter, but I need to know where I'm hitting. But he hides, <laughs> but he hides behind me. <laughs> that wraps up the first part of our conversation in part two. Interesting question. Can pets become possessed? What does Plato do in order to be as effective as possible when helping a person deal with the supernatural? And if Plato's not performing an exorcism on a demonic presence, what exactly is he exercising? And are there massive amounts of people today in our society who are possessed without them even knowing it? Until next time, for all of us at The Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening. 